Hi, this is my latest project. It's a stylish Italian design industrial slave clock, the sort that would have been used in places like factories and train stations. I bought it online and I've just finished cleaning it up. I've stripped it down and oiled it and in this video you'll see not only it working but you'll see the insides of it and I'll explain how it works. It's a classic piece of industrial technology that's worth preserving because it really is quite an interesting uh, piece of equipment. I've seen a number of videos on YouTube showing how the Solari clocks uh, work but uh, I haven't seen anything that explains exactly how they do work. So here's an opportunity to learn how these things function. It starts with a, a motor here that only has two positions. Uh, it has a, a, a coil here which alternates between north-south and south-north and that pulls a, a magnet that's in there which is hard to see in the video uh, and it causes that magnet to align north-south or south-north. So when you put on a 48 volts on one polarity onto the wires the motor will turn, half a turn and that will advance this wheel here which has 10 slots in it and each slot accounts for one minute and so every minute the motor does a half turn but it does a bit more than that because what actually happens is that uh, that armature in there it naturally would want to align directly between the north and south poles depending on which polarity is applied by the coil but what actually happens is that this armature rotates, it overshoots and then there's a ratchet prevents it going back any further so the, the armature instead of being aligned between the poles it's actually offset at about 30 degrees what that means is the next pulse that comes along is uh, that that armature will always rotate the same direction uh, even if it did want to go backwards it can't but it always wants to rotate clockwise so what actually happens when you apply the pulse is that the armature rotates, it overshoots and comes back and the, the, the shape of the uh, slots in this count wheel they prevent the, the count wheel rotating they, and they only allow the motor to rotate in one direction this rotor here then drives a gear wheel and this gear turns once every hour and as, it, as the motor turns, this arm out here uh, is pushed out by this snail cam here. And every time the uh, motor rotates once, that snail cam uh, goes a little further around. Eventually what happens is that this little cam here will drop off the edge and uh, that will advance the hour wheel which we'll see shortly uh, by one hour. So what does this look like when we apply power? Well, what I have is a power supply hooked up to a rocker switch and when the the rocker switch is, is set one way it will apply plus minus 48 volts and when it's rocked the other way it will apply minus plus 48 volts to the coil. So what does that look like? That's one pulse we apply the pulse the other way. If I apply a pulse the same polarity twice, nothing happens because the motor is already in a stable state. So it does require an alternating pulse to get the motor to turn. And that will advance the mechanism so that it's counting the minutes. So normally these pulses would be applied at one pulse every minute. There's a number of tricks applied in this mechanism which uh, make it quite an ingenious device and one of them is uh, this snail cam here. If we take the pressure off this um, cam wheel here you can see that there's some slack in there, there's some backplay, a lot of backlash. So the reason for that is that if you watch this cam it's, it's a reasonably large wheel and if, you, if we advance the uh, motor by one turn you'll see that the, 
the advance of the cam is less than the diameter of that wheel uh, and that's important because what it means is uh, without that backlash when this wheel goes off the edge of the cam without that uh, backlash then the wheel will get jammed so what actually happens is if we advance this you'll see that as we get closer to where the, the wheel is going to drop off the cam as the wheel goes off the edge there the cam will be pushed down and that will allow space for the wheel to actually drop in and there it goes pretty ingenious so the motor drives uh, an axle which goes through a bevel gear that rotates the the, uh, the flaps here the cards so every revolution which is one minute then an extra minute is displayed this the top of the shaft here is another snail cam and um, this roller presses against the cam and stores energy in the spring and when it drops so when that cam drops off it pulls the tens of minute one card so if we advance that there it goes there so we've now gone for an extra 10 minutes and that just continues through so we rotate and we go through and we're counting through each individual minute right and the cam is operating there so and putting energy into the spring and that spring is storing energy so it can then pull the next 10 minute flag up or card So the next part of the mechanism operates each hour. So when this snail cam here is activated, this arm pulls back and advances the cards on this side by one hour. So if we advance this a minute at a time, and we see that that uh, ratchet there pulls back this wheel and advances the cards by one hour. So that obviously happens every 60 minutes and this is a 24 hour clock so there are 24 teeth around here and they operate a gear which goes through another bevel gear and operates this vertical shaft that uh, rotates the cards. What's really interesting about the whole mechanism is the way that springs are used sort of as a, as a way of storing energy to activate the various mechanisms. So we saw that uh, on the other side there was a spring at the top, there's also a spring up here that's storing energy. There's a spring here which pulls on this arm and as the energy is applied to push this lever this way, this spring here stores energy and there's also a spring in here that uh, is operating on a can that you can't see but what this does is store up energy so that when the uh, hours get to this point here that's 2300 hours when the last tooth is activated it goes through this process here of bringing the hours back to zero and the energy to do that is stored in this spring so what these springs do is they even out the amount of energy that the motor has to apply at any stage in the operation of the mechanism. So all of these springs which act as uh, energy storage devices have a little bit of energy added to them at each revolution of the motor and then when they need to do their thing there's a sudden release of that stored energy. And the importance of that is that it means that the motor itself doesn't have to provide lots of power to drive any particular part of the mechanism at any particular time. It means that you can use a lower powered motor to drive a device that has um, relatively high energy requirements at any particular point in time. That's uh, a pretty sneaky piece of uh, design work. And as we get to the, the cam operating here we can see that that will pull on here and there will be a sudden release of energy as three different cards are changed. 
in one action. If we advance the hours manually, we'll, we'll get to, what have we got displayed at the moment? We've got 20 hundred at the moment. So if we can pull this lever, that's 2100, 2200, 2300, 2400 comes along and all those cards flick around and we're ready to start again and at the moment we have displayed zero so we're just after midnight. So all the energy required to go from this point to where the levers are now is stored in the spring. So how does this all look when we're operating it with, uh, with pulses. To see how the whole mechanism works we'll do a few pulses. You can see here that the cam is just about to fall off the edge and that will activate the, the first hour. There it goes, so we've changed an hour and we're now displaying uh, we're displaying 1 a.m. in the morning and the cards will now advance with each minute as we apply pulses. So how does this look from the front? Well here we go. As each minute goes past and we apply a pulse, the, the minutes advance. And when we get to 9 and apply the, the, the 10th pulse, you can see that the 9 will go to 0 and the 0 will go to 1. So we're now at 1.10 a.m. in the morning and so on. I don't know much about the history of this uh, clock. It's, uh, it was owned by Deutsche Telekom uh, West Germany. Uh, so that's all I know about it. Uh, it was probably installed in an industrial place where Deutsche Te Telekom provided uh, timekeeping services. So it was quite dirty on the outside and the inside uh, when I first got it. I stripped it down and gave it a complete clean out and oiled it and did all the stuff that will make it last for a long time. It's a very old clock. Uh, I suspect looking at the age of the parts and so on, it, it may be sort of 60s or 70s vintage. Uh, it has had some parts replaced in it and some of those are new and by new I mean they're probably 30 or 40 years old. Uh, it had a fluorescent tube uh, upgraded at some point which looks like a factory upgrade. Uh, so this clock has a bit of history in it. It's showing a few signs of uh, wear and tear and I've decided not to actually try and uh, fix all that up because that, um, that wear and tear, that patina, is, is part of its history and if I completely uh, took away all that history I think it would take away part of the character of the clock. So it is one of those sort of uh, uh, old technology things but it works in a quite an interesting way and I think that uh, this old technology they actually applied a lot of smart thinking to the way that these things were designed and built and that certainly shows in the, the way that the mechanism um, is operates. So yeah, an interesting piece of uh, retrospective uh, technology.